Alright, I want to talk to you about the uh, Morskansky tri-stick tonight. Um, you're probably going to be seeing a lot of these from anybody that does anything woodcraft, bushcraft, outdoors, um, online this week uh, because In the Bush Facebook page has a challenge going on, um, their annual uh, bushcraft challenge if you're a member. Um, everybody does it to hone their skills each year. Uh, and this is the first activity in that. Last year, uh, my Wild Medicinals post went through the roof uh, about this time, and that was because of the uh, same challenge. Um, I won the Medicinal Challenge last year along with it was, uh, Matt uh, Wicker. So I uh, figured I'd go through and do it this year just to hone my skills a little bit more. Um, always good to practice. I learned a lot last year from the Medicinals Challenge, so... Um, Thought I would give it a shot at uh, this year's. So, without any further ado, the uh, Moore's Tri-Stick. There's several versions of this out there. Um, so this is just one uh, that they had that they wanted us to do. Moore's has a more in-depth one that also has a whistle integrated into the bottom uh, and a couple other uh, things that aren't included in this notching. Uh, that would take significantly longer, too. Uh, this one took... Uh, about, I don't know, 45 minutes, half hour, maybe a little bit longer, about an hour. Uh, no, not hard to do. It's not exactly the prettiest thing in the world, but uh, hardwood, so you'll have what you, what you have. I started on one with a live pine, and it was just getting all gunky, so I thought I'd go ahead and just start it with a hardwood. I had a dowel and did it so it would look nice and pretty for you guys. All right, the first thing is a blunt end. Um... Use this as a striking tip. Uh, also, it's for not uh, having any issues with rubbing against your body with sharp it, uh, ends and whatnot. Uh, you might want to use this in a Roycraft pack for the bottom of your, your Roycraft pack that's going to be touching your body, uh, just so you don't have any splinters and whatnot in your, into your person. Uh, the next thing down here uh, is the reduction. Basically, you're just making it nice and thin. Uh, you're going to use that for toggles. Um, just for the additional leverage in a toggle. Uh, in fine woodworking, think uh, staircases and whatnot. Uh, usually that's going to be done on a lay, but uh, that's a reduction. The next one is an extremely helpful one, which is a pot holder. Um, basically, you put your pot into that little hook right there and uh, go at it. I'm actually going to go ahead and talk to you about how you make each of these two. Um, with the blunt end, you want to start back in here and then just start chipping away. As you can see, there's tiny little chips coming out of that. You just want to keep chipping your way towards the top, uh, keeping that one angle and just keep going around in a circle. You just want to twist uh, until you get that nice blunt end. Um, for the reduction, uh, you can either baton or just aggressively press down uh, on each side of where you want redu reduced and then kind of use your knife as a pry bar and then pop that out and then just smooth it out with your knife. Uh, with the uh, pot holder, pot hook, whatever you want to call it, uh, usually you want to baton an X into your wood and then come to the end here and then scrape it out and then thin it out all you need to. That'll give you a nice pot hook. Uh, the next thing is a uh, saddle notch. Uh, if you're going to build a log cabin on your own, basically this is the way to get the uh, the log to lay in there flat. So if you have another log, it's going to lay nice and neat and there's not going to be all those uh, air holes and whatnot coming in there. So that's a saddle notch. Uh, you can also use that for your Roycraft pack uh, to make sure your sticks lay nice and neat so that they're not just one on top of the other like sitting like that. They actually sit nice and tight and then do your ends with the blunt end. Uh, dovetail notch, uh, you can see it's kind of like a trapezoid type in there. Um, to get these, basically, you want to cut in like this, and then cut in on like this, uh, and then do a little cut in the center, and pry, pry, and then get your knife in there and get it all nice and flat. Uh, I didn't just use this knife, I used a smaller knife uh, from a Leatherman. Uh, Period-wise, they would have used the jackknife, um, Civil War soldiers and whatnot, so 
Uh, that's technically what you'd be whittling with is your, your pocket knife, not your, your belt knife. Um, I think they wanted us to use a belt knife for the most part, so I tried to use it as much as I could, but uh, I used a smaller diameter than or length than most people did, so I um, had to make my notches a little bit smaller. So that dovetail, like I said before, it was for making cabinets, um, anything that you want to lock in place, um, furniture and whatnot. Uh, the lock notch is this next one. Uh, basically, to make this one uh, at a slight angle, straight up and down, and then pop it out or cut it out and then just smooth it out with your knife. Um, this one is used for uh, figure four, mostly, um, and it locks against a 90 degree plane, which is your next one you're gonna make. To make the 90 degree plane, you're gonna once again do like you're doing the reduction, uh, either baton or press down hard, baton or press down hard, and then do a couple in the center, just so you get a nice and easy square, all the same depth, and then pry, 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 and then uh, smooth it out, and then flip it over, same thing, flip it over, same thing, flip it over, same thing. Uh, instead of going in a nice circle like you did up here for the reduction, you just want to do the four squares and you're done with it. And other than all you got to do is uh, smooth it out a little bit. And once again, that's usually used for locking against the uh, 90 for that uh, figure four trap. I'll do a figure four trap here in a couple uh, days or maybe a week next weekend um, to show you how those... Uh, work together to make the figure four. The uh, split, this is used in uh, basket making a lot. This wasn't part of the in the bush one they had, but it was part of Moore's and it's it's kind of important for basket making. Anytime you want to merge two things together for weaving, uh, do a little split like that and you can force that in there and as the wood comes back together it heals together again. Um, it kind of holds those two together um, for merging it. Uh, you throw a little bit of pine resin in there, and that'll never it'll never come out. It'll be stuck in there pretty good. Um, uh, the V-notch is over here. Uh, it's also used for figure four to lock the upside down, uh, the upright um, against the uh, support stick. So upright support stick towards your, your tree and your trap there over there. So it would be, you have your wedge in there. That's how you'd use it for your figure four. Uh, and obviously you'd make your, your upright to match into that notch. <clears throat> okay, your bow knock or bow notch. Um, basically it's a half moon type deal. And you're essentially just gonna use it for the top and the bottom. You put your bowstring in there. You want to try to make these as smooth as possible. That needs a little bit more work on that edge right there. Um, because any kind of friction right there, you'll fray your rope um, for your um, your bow. And obviously that'll decrease its tensile strength, decrease your decrease your draw length or draw weight, and decrease the length of time that you're gonna be able to use that weapon in the woods. Uh, and you don't want to do that, obviously. Uh, the last thing is a root stripper. Uh, I've never been a big fan of those. I always just use the 90 on my knife. Um, so this was the first time I ever made one, essentially. Um, basically, you, you put your root in there and you use it to, to strip the outsides of it. Um, you can use it as a digging tool. All kinds of things you can use it for. Uh, just that V uh, for supporting items and whatnot. Um, but Morris always says it's for stripping spruce roots. He's he's in a boreal forest, so he has a ton of spruce that he can use for cordage. So that's why he's the master. He does this and does it effectively. I don't have a ton of spruce where I'm at. I have mostly old growth hardwoods, so this isn't going to be something I'd use a lot. The things that I use out of this a uh, good bit are the blunt ends for packs and whatnot. Um, the pot holder, I use a ton of these. Uh, that's one really important to remember. And obviously, all the ones you need right here for the figure four. And splitting as well. Um, I don't do that for basket purposes, but just plain old splitting wood. Um, you can use it to 
to, like I said, merge in. And some people even do it to grow different types of trees together. Um, you basically put in a different uh, part of a live tree and you can merge two different trees into one tree. I've seen it done a couple times, um, never done it myself, but apparently you can do it pretty easily. So, that is the Morris Kahansky Tri-Stick. I'll have a full blog article on this later in the week, I believe, um, talking more about how you can use each one of these notches and going a little more in-depth into how you can actually carve them. Um, oh, for the uh, the bow notch, to make it, um, basically you, you can baton in like that, and then turn your knife a little bit, baton again, baton again, and then come up here and do the same, baton there, baton there, baton there, and carve in. Uh, you can also do the same thing with just pressure and keep pressing, pressing, pressing. Uh, for this one, uh, baton, uh, reduce, 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 make smooth. And that's how you make your root stripper. So, there's your Morse Kahansky tri stick for improving your um, carving skills, notching skills. Um, highly recommend you try it. It's I'm not going to say it's a ton of fun. Uh, it's good to get those your, your hands working, uh, using your knife, getting familiar with your knife. If you're getting a new knife and you want to really test it out uh, to see how it's going to work and perform, uh, I highly recommend doing one of these just to test out the knife. Um, that's one of the reasons I've started carrying this thinner knife uh, on my belt because number one of the spear point, it works great. Um, it's a much better carver than the heavier ones like the Scout or the Bushcrafter. The, the thicker bushcrafter or the uh, PLSK-1. I couldn't do half of these with those bigger knives, whereas I can still do heavy-duty tasks with this knife that I can't do with the other one. And also, the addition of this uh, lanyard on this knife gives you a ton of control. Um, whenever I'm doing reductions and whatnot on here, or just fine notching, I have so much more control when I have that pulling against. It, uh, it's something you learn about your knife as you use it more and more. Um, also, if you don't have a jackknife or a leatherman in your kit, I recommend you get it just because that thinner profile Scandi blade or full flat grind blade has a bunch of carving blades on there. You can have three or four ones on there. That would make this go a lot faster if you didn't want to just use a straight blade. I would also have saws on there and uh, try to get one that has a wood file on it as well. Um, that wood file really come in handy for smoothing out all these uh, edges uh, if you want to get really, really precise. So try to find... A Leatherman that has those saws, a couple blades, and a couple files on it. Uh, maybe even a couple carving tools. And get that as your, your secondary backup blade to keep in your uh, kit. So, Morse Kansky dry stick uh, made with a Leatherman blade. Uh, let's show you here. Where is he at? Actually, there's a Winchester. Sorry. Small little... Scandy blade there, and the LT right uh, with cracker. Thank you for watching, and I'll be back with more videos shortly.